Hello everyone, welcome and thank you for tuning in this afternoon. Our topic for today is how you can contribute to the digital future of the German Mittelstand. In this session, you learn how to digitize industries, what key drivers are and how to overcome uncertainties. Also, you will learn how to boost your company's digitization, at what point partnerships make sense and which steps, which steps you need to take on your own. I'm very excited to welcome the following guests from the Hermann Gruppe today. So the Hermann Gruppe is a mid-cap industrial holding with 27 affiliate affiliate companies operating in the automotive sector, engineering, communication technology, and industrial services. The group offers a diverse range of products and services, from sheet metal components for utility vehicles to complex logistic concepts, as well as solutions for critical infrastructure and industrial services for manufacturers. Anna Hermann is with us today, and she's the head of strategic development at the Hermann Gruppe. She's responsible for corporate strategy, including the recent launch of a corporate digitization pilot. After completing her master's degree at the Technical University of Munich in business and mechanical engineering, Anna worked in management consulting for a few years before joining the family business in 2018. Then we also have Alexander Hauswald as our guest, and he is the managing, direct, managing director of Hermann Digital GmbH since January 2020. After studying computer science at a full driving University of Applied Sciences, Alexander began his professional career as a software developer and architect in IT consultancies. Then as head of development and architecture at a medium-sized telecommunications company in Munich, he shaped the digitization of this company. Then he moved on to BSH Hausgeräte GmbH as chief architect, and his responsibilities were expanded to the areas of production, logistics, and industry 4.0, which and so he can now contribute his experience of these positions in his new role as managing director of the Hermann Digital GmbH as of January 2020. Then we have your host of this session, which is Christian Mohr. And Christian Mohr is with the Unternehmertum or has been with the Unternehmertum since 2019. And he joined the innovation consultancy of Unternehmertum as a new partner and is now responsible to drive innovation at established companies. We're very happy to have Christian with us. He has more than 12 years of experience in the advisory firm KPMG. Where, we where he was head of the innovation consulting division, which he also built up with a focus on technology in Germany. He's also made a name for himself as a tech expert and an internationally sought after author of specialist books, among others, also one called Digitization of the Legal Market. So if you have any questions, um, also during or after, please don't hesitate to get, get in touch with them via the LinkedIn profiles, which we'll post also in the chat. And now I'm handing over to Christian and have an interesting discussion. Thanks, Miki, um, for the great introduction of um, Alexander and Anna. Um, again, from my side, also a very warm welcome to you, Anna and Alexander. Great to have you here in this talk today. Um, as we already heard, the title of this uh, you talk is uh, how to contribute to the digital future of German Mittelstand. Um, so Anna, your first touch point with Unternehmertum was because you wanted to tackle this issue with Hermann Gruppe. Um, um, what was your experience and how did you do that? Okay. Um, first of all, Christian, thank you very much for having us for this discussion today. Um, maybe let me rephrase your question um, by tackling this issue. I would say we just um, started addressing this enormous issue of digitalization mm -hmm. and especially Mittelstand. Um, maybe to give you a little bit of background information, um, we just shortly founded um, a digitalization unit um, called, called Hermann Digital, mm -hmm. um, which works together with the different subsidiaries of our Hermann Group and develop um, digital software products and act as an innovation hub for these subsidiaries, mm -hmm. while at the same time delivering specific skills it needs to um, fulfill such projects and also benefit from, um, 
cross-functional um, experience sharing across the different subsidiaries. Mm -hmm. So when we decided we want to do this initiative, we knew we can't do it on our own and we need um, a sparings partner and a partner who has experience in this field. And um, this is how we got to Entrenema Tum actually for the first time. Um, here, Bineo in special um, worked as a great sparings partner in the beginning and helped us um, do some design, inter some internal design thinking workshops. Um, then when we said, okay, we, we really want to fulfill this project, um, we actually, as I think one of the first mid-sized uh, companies participated in the um, digital product school program one year ago, mm -hmm. um, where we addressed the team with um, one of the, the projects. Mm -hmm. And I'm a little proud to say that we even managed to like oh, um, take one of these teams into Herman Digital and are now um, continuously working on the development of the project we, we started there. So mm -hmm. yeah, we had a lot of touch points with Andre Neymartum. I think one of the great things is um, from Winter Neymar to bringing together students or startups and other programs um, with corporations and because students also often have a different um, or more unbiased um, approach on tackling specific problems than maybe very established um, companies or subsidiaries have and um, so I think it's a great symbiosis. Cool, thanks a lot. So um, the first steps were actually made in through the direction of digitalization. So, but how, however, I mean, as every, I, I would guess every other company in German economy, you were also tackled by COVID-19 pandemic um, early this year. Uh, so when you think back, would you say um, attending uh, a program like Digital Product School or, and or initiating uh, Hermann Digital by, by um, at the beginning of 2019, was it actually, um, uh, an advantage um, when you um, take a look on the pandemic and or was it simply just a push to really understand that it's now really essential to move forward with digitalization? Um, well, so we started um, Herman Digital, we, were, we started the initiative in 2018 and only founded the company in 2019. So, yeah. And started with our first team early 2020. And um, starting, we had huge expansion plans for 2020 <laughs> and um, a very clear roadmap. And then I think exactly like you said, like every other company, um, the COVID crisis uh, hit us pretty hard. Also, our revenues being exposed to the utility and vehicle yeah. industries was over 40 percent. Of course, one of our main measures was how can we um, cut large cash out projects, which are maybe not substantial for, for right. surviving of the company. And um, so I'm very happy that our management um, saw the importance of an initiative or a very young initiative like Herman Digital with maybe not already producing huge revenues. But um, we jointly um, decided to keep Herman Digital running, but more or less put the expansion plans on hold um, until yeah. we can more foresee the consequences of, of this current situation. So. It's a little bit of both. So uh, I'm happy that we're still up and running and working, but um, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I have to say that we, we got a little bump in the road through COVID. <laughs> okay, that's interesting because um, um, based on the survey we did on the influence of COVID-19, actually it really sh um, showcased or actually um, uh, came out that a lot of companies um, uh, put their activities around innovation and digitization kind of on a short-term track um, just to ensure that the current business models work. So Alexander, um, I mean, you're, as you're currently kind of in the, in the midst of onboarding to your new role at uh, Hermann Digital as of the 1st of January, um, have you seen similar kind of challenges in your previous role? And let's say, what is your kind of master plan you have for Hermann Digital as a new CEO? Well, to be honest, uh, um, the, the master plan still does not exist yet. Uh, so um, that's partly because um, we don't know how, how COVID and Corona crisis is uh, still lasting in, in 2021. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think we, we need to be cautious, but mm -hmm. still ambitious um, mm -hmm. to, to, to drive the digitalization initiatives. And um, well, the, the plan was that uh, I would start, I think, July this year uh, at Terminal Digital. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we we moved it or we shifted it to to first of January because of the of the pausing of uh, digitalization itself. Um, what I see is that um, digitalization has a promise of of uh, delivering short term 
Yeah? Mm -hmm. um, because all the other long lasting strategies, etc. Um, or look at, uh, if you look in the automotive section, they always right. need five, six, seven years to produce mm -hmm. a new car. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, everything we do with digitalization means, well, basically you have three to six months yeah? mm -hmm. and um, delivering a new product. And uh, what, uh, what we achieved now with our first small DPS project and uh, with the team was mm -hmm. that they delivered with basically two, two developers and one UX guy Mm -hmm. uh, within five months, a running application, which is now used since uh, three weeks in production already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, we we ve really we really have to see that uh, we fasten up the development cycles and the the time to market, and yeah. not just make it as part of a strategy, uh, okay. and and uh, try to be fast, but be really fast. Yeah. So learn yeah. from from. Uh, from the Lean Startup, et cetera, from Eric Ries, and uh, really uh, leverage all the ideas they have um, to be really a, a fast company. Okay. Um, so, so you actually mentioned the, the kind of the momentum of speed. Um, and as, as we already uh, had at the beginning, um, Unternehmertum is uh, really seeking on matching startups to corporates and or especially to German Mittelstand, like you are as hidden champion. Um, Maybe a question to you, both of you, like uh, maybe starting with Anna first and then with Alexander. Um, how do you see the role of startups in the future for Hermann Digital or for this journey? As I said, is it, that's, not, that's, no, that's no plan. Maybe it's a journey. Maybe it's a journey with a lot of roadblocks, <laughs> a lot of corners. Um, so what is, what is your, from your point of view, um, there's no right or wrong now. Um, what is the role of startups from your point? Let's say, start with Anna, then uh, maybe Alex can add on this. Um. So thank you very much for that question. I think um, startups, but also partners play a huge role in, in developing um, more or less a, a digital strategy or a digitization strategy for a mid-sized company. Because we have to see as a mid-sized company, we definitely don't have the resources as like a large corporate um, and also not the innovation or the development resources. On yeah. the other hand, I think, mid-sized companies are driven to supply the same services as um, large corporates in addition to their traditional business model. So mm -hmm. if we want to be able to tackle this challenge and, and be able to pro provide our customers with the right solutions and the extended solutions, mm -hmm. I think we can't do it without, without um, partners and without startups and benefit from their expertise in their special areas. They focus mostly on one specific problem solving topic. And I think we can we can especially gain from their speed and their knowledge, but we have to learn how to integrate it the right way and how to trust them. And I think there we still have a learning process because I put setting up the, um, the this idea of our um, group wide innovation project. I did also a lot of research on my own and I thought that like one of the two main reasons um, mid-sized companies or German Mittelstand um, still has like a hard problem in fulfilling digitalization in, in a whole is yeah. because I think only 12% um, already work together with, with startups. And if you look at to Dax Dreisig, it's, it's at least 50%. So I think yeah. we have to learn in, in sharing our knowledge um, mm -hmm. and being more open, mm -hmm. um, but also in, in working environments together with the startups. So yes, they definitely play a big role, but I think we haven't uh, tackled the, the problem yet in a whole. <laughs> okay. Maybe Alexander, you want to add on? Well, um, totally agree with Anna here. Um, for me, the one, one additional topic is coming in um, because um, German Mittelstand basically, uh, they were startups themselves. Yeah? Uh, and they were founded by family businesses, still owned a lot by family businesses, uh, mm -hmm. whether it's, it's a Hermann Gruppe or if you look at, at Bosch, uh, still family owned, uh, can never be, uh, be put on a, on a stock market. Yeah. Um, because the, the the owner, the, the founder wished it like that. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we are also German engineers uh, mm -hmm. in the Mittelstand. And German engineers always think um, we don't take the ideas of someone else, we invent it ourselves. <laughs> and um, I think we, we to, to gain really momentum and speed, we have to break this, uh, this cycle a little bit up. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like we don't need any German engineers anymore in our company our, ourselves, but mm -hmm. uh, we need to, to really get the input 
from from the outside in uh, and connect and collaborate so uh, it's not about buying something from someone so i'm having more the the, the partnership model more the collaboration model and really yeah. finding together um, like you see in, in collaborative in co-working spaces etc um, where german mittelstand currently is not present yeah and right. um, the big companies like BMW, Allianz, etc., they all, all sit in the co-working spaces like WeWork, etc. Right. Um, but you won't find or you won't find hardly German Mittelstand there, uh, mm -hmm. really connecting and collaborating with the startups and uh, getting their ideas into the company. And that's yeah. something um, which uh, we want to change at, at German Dig Digital to be mm -hmm. really present yeah. where uh, the startups are and we can bring the ideas back to the company, so being a, a kind of uh, inter-company inter um, founding model. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting, thanks a lot. Um, so yeah, I totally agree. So uh, getting more visible, I think is one of the keys for, for Mittelstand, um, but maybe a just a simple question. Uh, as we know that also kind of a lot of startups are listening to this talk. Um, um, if, if they think um, Hermann Group would be interesting for their kind of product or service, how do, how do they get in contact with you? It's an easy question, but it's the hardest thing they ever have, how to get in contact with a company and do not end up in a kind of spam um, trash box. So how do they get in contact uh, with Hermann Digital or Hermann Group? Well, sorry. <laughs> well, you the most ahead. easiest part is probably uh, commenting on this uh, on this YouTube video, uh, <laughs> saying that they have a great idea, then uh, mm -hmm. we definitely will read all the comments. Um, uh, this would be probably the most easiest one, but uh, apart from that, um, I think uh, what, I, what I want to do is yeah. having kind of, uh, of pitch nights within our company. So uh, finding a kind of event or forum or perhaps virtual, perhaps in, in, in person, we have to see, um, yeah. but really bringing together uh, a kind of pitch for, for startups, doing hackathons, etc., yeah. and yeah. getting the business people joining that uh, mm -hmm. and really seeing what they can deliver and uh, if you see it in, in real and not on a website or or a youtube video or whatever and meet the people behind that then it, then it gets interesting because then you start talking you start discussing and then probably the the ideas uh, kind of shape shape themselves uh. cool anna something to add on um, maybe next to commenting on the talk, uh, LinkedIn definitely, and um, <laughs> we're going to have a, a Herman landing page, a Herman digital landing page, with of course also a contact um, okay, cool. um, site coming up soon. Okay. Um, but yeah, I totally agree with with Alex' ideas, and I think also um, not to mention Unternehmertum also gives or has great platforms to get in, in, in touch with startups. Um, I think you just have to start using the ecosystem yeah. Yeah. you have. But um, yeah, for any startups who want to contact us, um, exactly, definitely LinkedIn, the YouTube cool. um, channel, and Herman landing page. So. Now you get bombarded with LinkedIn requests. Good. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, but, but, but just to say, uh, yeah. uh, so Herman Digital is still so fresh that our website is still coming in, in probably two, three, four weeks. Yeah. So cool. That's a good chance <laughs> to be one of the first. <laughs> so, so Anna, let's talk about um, um, talents. Um, so uh, topic digital should only depend on pandemics, obviously, so, but also should be something to be established for the long run. Um, um, so how hard is it actually for a hidden champion and you, it, and you already uh, mentioned it's really hard to have the right resources and capabilities as a small as a smaller company the big players in especially munich so how hard is it for you as um, hermann um to find the right talents uh, especially when it comes to digital competencies uh, in the um, ecosystem munich when you compete to the big tech companies in that case well, um, definitely not easy. I think Munich is, of course, um, a very competitive ground for talent. Um, but one of the reasons um, we said we, we want to do a joint initiative is that a lot of our subsidiaries um, are in even remoter areas where yeah. it is even more difficult to find these kind of talents um, and expertise because often they're not even universities or um, education um, facilities around which which uh, more or less um educate such uh, such expertise and i think yes munich is hard has um 
big corporates competing. On the other hand, Munich has great universities, um, a lot of people wanting to move to Munich and a great ecosystem, um, which if you use, you can get in contact with graduates um, very well and get to know them, like through GPS, um, which I think yeah. is a great program where um, also with international graduates, um, they get to know you, the company for three months, you get to know the team, you get to work with them. And I think building this, this level of, of uh, trust um, before starting um, a job somewhere can also be a huge advantage. Okay, cool. Alexander, something to add? Yeah, um, well, I think um, we have, a, in, in Munich, we have a, a really great ecosystem from from university side. So we have the, the TU München, like, like Anna mentioned. We have yeah. the LMU, both mm -hmm. are elite universities as far as yeah. I know. Um, Augsburg is not too far away. We have uh, applied sciences in, in Munich, in, uh, in Rosenheim, in Augsburg. So Nuremberg is not that far away. So I think um, it's not uh, it's not a coincidence that uh, Google, Facebook, etc., are all sitting in Munich and not in Berlin, for example. Uh, so uh, I think connecting with the universities and getting the fresh talent, the new new ideas, is is absolutely crucial. And uh, to be honest. Uh, if I if I would uh, finish my studies uh, today, um, mm -hmm. and having such a, a broad variety of, of options where to go, uh, mm -hmm. I can decide quite well. But perhaps I have a chance to go to Google. Okay, mm -hmm. then I take one year Google, and then I come to to Herman Digital. Uh, mm -hmm. That's it's also fine yeah, yeah. for me. Okay. Cool. So uh, when it comes to talents, it's also about ecosystem. And you also mentioned it, um, Alexander. Uh, so thanks for the kind of link to the next question. Um, so a lot of ecosystem have been uh, kind of built up, generated, or have been initiated in the last couple of um, years, um, whether they are offline or online. Um, and it's also about um, supporting each other within the network. And something also came across when we did the um, kind of um, survey around COVID-19 that especially companies dealing with an ecosystem or being an active part of an ecosystem are kind of more um, resilient to pandemics. So is it A, Alexander, something you could actually agree on? And uh, B, if yes, what, why do you think this is so essential to be part of an ecosystem? And then maybe also Anna on this. Well, um, I think uh, yeah, ecosystem is absolutely crucial. Uh, so um, the point of, of resilience, I think this is not something you see on a, on a company level. Uh, if you look at uh, more on a, on a system level, um, yeah. uh, you always see that a system is more resilient if it has more options, more possibilities to to react to circumstances, to the environment, etc. Uh, and, uh, and I totally believe that this is the same uh, for for companies, for enterprises, big or small. Um, having a good ecosystem gives you the opportunity to to not focus only on one topic, and and you are alone, um, but you can move. Yeah, you can. You don't have to stay all the time in the same direction. Mm -hmm. You can take a different approach. You can have new people. You have can can have new contacts. But if you're only only connected to to the same people over the last 30, 40 years, and yeah. not moving the company, um, then you're going to get stuck, uh, and yeah. uh, probably you will fail. Uh, mm -hmm. And we see it in the in the Corona crisis now very very clearly. If you look at at, at bigger companies who don't have actually managed their ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, they are not able to move and then have a hard time. And the more versatile, the more adaptive you are as a company, the more mm -hmm. easy it gets for you to, to really um, take this, this crisis as a chance and not okay. as a threat. Yeah. Okay, cool. Anna, something you want to add on? I think Alex did a pretty good job um, explaining it. No, I think he he got all the points. And just maybe to emphasize again, also for for Mittelstand, I think um, ecosystem is especially important, and we we have to really start to notice it and and more um, facilitate it. And I think here we we still are have have some like. Um, some steps to go um, to to fully also learn how to act in the ecosystem. I think you also if you build up an ecosystem, it's also important to know how how to act in the ecosystem. Which role do you want to play? Which partners do you engage with? Um, how do you engage with them? On which topics? Um, and if you more or less if you define it for yourself and if you fully live it, it can be of a great advantage um, for 
for you as a company with talents, with, yep. with products, with knowledge sharing, and especially also in crises, because I mean, this Corona crisis was a kind of crisis. And I think we never in that circumstances faced, mm -hmm. um, or at least most of us not, not in a lifetime yet. And also with working environment situations, how do you manage home office? How do you manage office on site? And just the exchanging with other partners and um, more or less not having to, to do it all on your own could also can also be of huge benefit and can also, I think, be very supportive. I think ecosystem could be a separate topic for another talk. So, <laughs> but the time is flying. Uh, that's the that's the good thing about interesting talks. Um, so um, maybe the last two questions. The first one to Anna, and then the last one to the both of you again. So Anna, um, we're lucky to have the chance to talk to um, Judith Gerlach, which is the Ministry of um, Digital Affairs in Bavaria, um, and the youngest the youngest ever been. Uh, announced um, minister in that case, uh, especially now for the topic of digital. So, um, and, and I will ask her, her also the question, what she uh, kind of expects or what, what her wish would be uh, from so-called corporates and or Mittelstand uh, and uh, to give the, kind of this question upfront to you. So what is your kind of wish or what would you like to have uh, from kind of the ministry uh, for the future to shape the digital agenda also for SMEs? Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I actually <laughs> thought about it and talked about it with Alex a little bit in the, uh, <laughs> before this talk. Um, mm -hmm. And I think what what, um, what a ministry can give mostly is, is structure and of course funds um, for specific topics. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of the main issues still for at least SMEs, um, also what, what I read in my research was that I think we really need the, the stable broadband connection, but I know that that is not in the hands of the Ministry of uh, yes. Digitalization, but uh, the Ministry of Transport. Um, but on the other hand, um, I think for me as representing one of the mid-sized companies, um, more interaction with um, with politics on the means yep. of digitalization, on um, how also SMEs, not large corporates, um, maybe face its differences. Um, I think large corporates often, often have uh, the funds to do lobbying or to present their needs and, and their issues um, yep. a lot um, more present. And um, so uh, I think one of my uh, my topics would be more, more interaction, um, okay. more cooperation, more collaboration. Um, and maybe also specific um, funding in those kind of areas. Okay, it seems like to be a good. Perhaps, yeah, Alex, sorry. Perhaps one, one remark uh, on that because I to, 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 this morning I read an interview uh, mm -hmm. in another uh, um, magazine, yeah. uh, and they had uh, some clear recommendations I can totally agree with. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing was infrastructure, mm -hmm. so helping in the infrastructure segment to be mm -hmm. uh, really pushing the digitalization. Yeah. And the second one was perhaps if uh, the um, the state gives project out, okay. um, why not have a, a, a ratio given to startups? Mm -hmm. uh, why why does could the Corona app has to be implemented by Telecom and SAP? What what kind of competency do they have? Uh, so I'm not blaming them, but <laughs> I, I'm, for my for my perspective, why not give it to a startup? Uh, yeah. This kind of, of uh, innovative uh, um, application. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so maybe we have the chance to actually give this to Judith Gerlach. Um, let's see what he's going to reply on on Thursday uh, this week. Um, so last question to the both of you. Um, so um, first of all, thanks a lot for your time. A really interesting talk. And I guess we could talk for, for, for hours now. But as it is with digital talks, keep them to limit and to keep the tension. Um, so the la last question from my side to the both of you, let's start with Anna and then with Alexander, would be what is your, what is your vision for um, Hermann as a group in the digital age um, and for Hermann Digital? Big question, I'll try to answer it. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> Always the big question by um, the end, Anna. <laughs> uh, um, so my, my vision for Hermann Digital is um, actually to really enable um, Hermann Group and the company that Herm in, in, in Hermann Group to um, fully um, manage the, on the one hand um, the, the efforts to achieve digitization and uh, more or less enhance their products and their business models um, with digital solutions but also internally their process optimization and um, through this idea of a joint incubation hub to really um, 
profit from from the cross uh, cross functional cross sectional um, knowledge transfer, but also lessons learned um, and um, to support them in maybe not so easy topics um, down the maybe fairly different also from their um, business models or from their current um, business um, actions they take. So that's more or less my 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 vision for for Herman Digital and. Um, Mm -hmm. Of course, in the long run, um, not only um, facilitate um, companies in Herman Digital, but uh, in Herman Group, but also, mm -hmm. of course, uh, other further companies um, in the market. Cool. Yeah, from my side, uh, um, emphasizing what, what Anna said, uh, um, for me, the vision of Herman Digital is, uh, and I think my role shows it quite well, because I'm not only leading Herman Digital, but I will also be the CDO for Herman Gruppe. Um, so oh, this alone emphasizes already uh, the, the the perspective on, on Herman Digital, and what we what we and uh, want to achieve is um, on the one hand really having complete new services, mm -hmm. having uh, all Herman uh, services on the market, enhanced with with value add services. Uh, so. Um, if we if we buy and uh, if we build and and sell machines, mm -hmm. we have to have predictive maintenance, machine learning, etc. As part of that, uh, this is not anymore uh, only a nice to have. Yeah. Uh, the competition demands it because everyone else already has it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So there is no discussion about uh, it's nice to have. Uh, there is no there is no way around software anymore. Uh, so this is a big topic. Um, then, like Anna said. Um, really optimizing the in-house processes, um, mm -hmm. pr uh, procurement, B2B, e-commerce, uh, there are lots of topics and uh, perhaps I can fill the next four hours only talking about uh, <laughs> all the different services we want to enhance. Um, and the third thing would be for me to, to say, uh, okay, what I, what I said a few minutes ago, uh, giving startups and connecting it to Hermann Gruppe, um, mm -hmm. this will be one of the big topics we have uh, because there's so much, uh, so, such a good mindset, so many ideas out there, uh, we have to connect it and give them the stage in the Hermann Gruppe to really connect them uh, with us and have a collaboration and partnership on that and make it fruitful. Yeah. Cool. Anna, Alexander, as I said before, we could talk for, for hours and ages now, but thank you so much for your time. Um, okay. Wish you all the best for the next steps, even if there's no plan ready. I, I, I assume the journey will be in planning. Um, and I will now hand it back to um, Mickey for the closing. So thanks again to you guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much, Christian, Anna and Alexander. So again, please feel free to contact the three of them if you have any further questions. Um, and also, if you want to, please subscribe to our newsletter if you want to be kept up to date on upcoming topics and events. Thanks all for watching. It's a, been a pleasure to listen to the interesting discussion. And we will be back in two days, actually, on October 8th at 4 p.m. with our Bavarian State Minister, Judith Gerla, from the Ministry of Digital Affairs. Again, um, with our host, Christian Mohr, who will do the interview with Judith Gerla. See you then. <laughs>